Welcome to Living Well with MS Coffee Break. I'm your host, Jeff Alex. We decided to do something a little different in expanding the range of content we produce here at Living Well with MS. Since our community forms the beating heart of overcoming MS, we are commencing this special series called Coffee Break, which features short interviews with members of the OMS community talking about their personal journeys adopting and staying on the OMS 7-step recovery program, the challenges they encountered and how they overcame them, and their tips and tricks for sticking to the path that leads to better health. We hope you enjoy and learn from these brief chats between our regular episodes, and as always, your comments and suggestions are welcome by emailing podcast at overcomingms.org. That's podcast at overcomingms.org. And don't forget, if you enjoy these and other Living Well with MS podcast episodes, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast listening platform. So Sean, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your life, where you live and anything about yourself that you'd like to share with us? Hi there Jeff, uh, my name is Sean Cressinger uh, and these days I'm a part-time carpenter. Uh, I live in Cornwall with my partner Michelle, uh, two daughters, one of which is still at home. I uh, started my work life um, back in the early days as an, in the RSPCA. I started as a volunteer and then went on to become an inspector in Derbyshire uh, and I stayed with them until the stress felt like it was getting to me a bit and I became self-employed I moved to Cornwall uh, I started here as a gardener first of all and then retrained as a carpenter and specialized in furniture and um, when were you diagnosed with MS and how long have you been following um, the OMS Seven Step Recovery Program? Well, I was diagnosed uh, not quite five years ago. Um, although, despite the diagnosis, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty definite I had it. I've had it an awful lot longer, even back to into my 20s. But um, uh, being a fellow, I think I kept my head under the radar um, as some fellas do, and I ignored it. Um, uh, it started during a really stressful time in the RSPCA for me, um, and I, I, I do think there is a, a definite link between stress and symptoms, a, a link that can't be ignored. Um, the MS isn't new. MS isn't new to me. My aunt had it at the time, and also at the time, um, uh, way back, my sister I had, uh, also had MS along with uh, several cousins um, and I started the OMS within months of the, this more recent diagnosis if you like the five-year diagnosis um, within months of that I had um, found out about OMS and I started the program and um just a, a thing sort of slightly different uh, with you and the other um, Coffee Break guests is that there's been a recent um, video out. So could you tell us a little bit about the video Fighting Multiple Sclerosis that your daughter Holly made? Yeah, Holly's film um, was made. Um, she, she's an actual, she's a student in the final year at uh, Falmouth University. Um, the film is her last project. It was made right at the start of lockdown in fact about a week beforehand um so that restricted it an awful lot it, it also it didn't help that i wasn't very comfortable with being the subject matter um but i had to get over that as you do for your kids you have to do that sort of thing but it has resulted it's been well viewed it's been it's resulted in a, over uh, 2000 views um that's on youtube and instagram um, and counting, um, which is really, it's the result that I wanted. Um, that was the whole point of uh, of uh, me wanting to take part in that film. I mean, it is linked to in the show notes, so I would recommend, it's a, it's a quite an inspirational um, video to watch. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend anyone um, listening to this watches that. Um, and... With the OMS programme, what's um, your favourite thing about the OMS programme um, and what do you feel has made the, the biggest positive impact to you? 
Uh, my favourite part would be the food, actually. Um, the, the food has just... I'm, uh, I'm so keen on the food now. It was fairly easy for me anyway because I was a vegetarian. So the jump to an OMS diet wasn't a huge one. But it is my favourite part. I mean, really, it's nice that I'm a healthier weight now than I was before, which is, is quite nice. Um, but I do enjoy cooking. Uh, it feels really good, actually, to be feeding myself with foods that are going to help keep me as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Um, so really, favourite-wise, that's my favourite part is now that I feel healthier in many ways than I did five years ago. That, that was the biggest positive. What's your greatest challenge in adopting the OMS programme? Uh, well, for me, as I said before, I mean, luckily, in many ways, it wasn't too much of a challenge. Uh, I, I had, ex you know, I was exercising anyway. Um, I was a vegetarian anyway. Uh, and also a big part that's, that's helped is Michelle, my partner. Uh, she ate an almost entirely OMS diet anyway. So that wasn't that wasn't a, a challenge. But what has been a challenge for me personally is the meditation side. Uh, that has been a bit of an issue and it remains a bit of an issue. Uh, it still eludes me, um, but I'm continuing to work on it. Um, but for me, that has been the biggest challenge is just getting that aspect of the program, uh, trying to come to terms with that and trying to actually do it efficiently. I'm you did mention like. actually that, that there's a, you've found a definite connection with stress. So there's definitely a, a mental aspect to it, isn't there? To me, the, the stress, the stress aspect, the more, the more people with the MS that I speak to, um, the more I'm absolutely convinced that stress has got such a huge uh, and that it actually causes it in the first place. I, I, yeah, I've no idea about that. Um, but I am pretty sure that once stress is added to the pot, if you like, um, the actual MS condition can, can flare up and it can cause symptoms. Uh, so I think controlling that, uh, for me, in my non -medical, with my non-medical background, um, that, that stress is, is, is a, has got a huge part to play. Um, and so you touched on um, lockdown affecting the video recording. And um, this is obviously recorded um, during, sort of right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so how have you had to adapt your, um, daily healthy habits, um, to the realities imposed by COVID-19? I mean, we're in the UK and uh, well, actually, um, myself and Sean, we're in neighboring OMS circles, if you like. Um, and so down here, I mean, we have been told we're on pretty much complete lockdown in the UK. Um, we shouldn't really be going out very often at all. Um, and a lot of people with MS have been told not to go out, literally not at all, not even leave the front door. So um, how have you had to have to adapt to that and how has COVID-19 affected you? Well, with COVID-19, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, Jeff, to put to, to actually take some positives from it. Uh, I, I'm not a key worker. And as you know, that key workers can can carry on uh, and, and do what they have to do. Um, but as a carpenter, all my carpentry projects, uh, they can all wait. Uh, so I'm at home. Um, I'm not as active. Um, so with that side of things, I mean, luckily, I've got some gym equipment at home. Uh, so I make sure I use it more so than I used to. Um, I used to use it pretty regularly anyway, maybe two or three times a week. Now it's, I'm trying to use it every day just purely because I'm not as active. Um, but in some ways, I, I am actually trying to enjoy the slower pace of life. That, that slower pace of life seems to suit me. Um, and I do, um, I do almost enjoy the thought that 
the earth, if you like, is seems to be having a breather. So I'm trying to take that aspect as, of COVID-19. You know, I know it's a horrible thing. It's a terrible thing. But I'm trying to take uh, aspects which maybe are a little bit more uh, positive. Having said that, I mean, luckily I have a garden and I live in a fairly rural area uh, where I can happily walk off to the woods. And I know it's not as easy as, you know, for for some people, you know, for those who may live in a city or flat, for instance, um, maybe actually confined now for the uh, for three months. I know it's not as easy for everybody. So it is fairly easy for me. And I'm, and I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. OK. And um, just finally, uh, do you have any um, tips or tricks that you could share with our audience um, that might help people on their OMS journeys? It's really worth to keep experimenting with the food. Um, you will find you'll find as you're looking around, you'll find new ingredients. You'll look at new recipes. You will find suddenly you'll have, you know, you will find favorite meals um, and you'll discover foods that you once disliked and you'll start enjoying them. I mean, whoever thought, whoever thought I'd start loving broccoli yet. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's mad, but I do I absolutely love it now. Um, but not only the food, but do actually not only keep up with the exercise, um, but try and set yourself goals um so if you set yourself goals i feel you know i think you will feel like you're not only maintaining your health uh you're not only maintaining your fitness but you could actually be improving it um so although most of us are quite happy to uh at least be maintaining our health but if you feel like you're improving it it's a huge it's a huge bonus um and I suppose, lastly, if, if, if you feel that the program is helping you, tell others and share it. Um, don't keep quiet about it. And also, the, the program is such a healthy program that share it with people, whether they have MS or not. Uh, share it with people. Share the, share the benefits. Thank you. That's great. That's that's good. That final bit of advice is very good, actually. I I certainly um, have come across people. My mother actually she has um, arthritis, and she's found she she started to pretty much follow a slightly modified, but most of the OMS program, and um, yeah. she's found yeah. benefits from it. And I think a lot of those other autoimmune conditions, um, it does seem to um, it's generally a healthy way of life, isn't it? And there's so much stuff now. There's a lot coming out now about vitamin D that everyone should be having more vitamin D, and yeah. And yep. we sort of think, yeah, we were kind of ahead of the curve on that. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I think, I think, I think you're right. We're not, um, you know, it's not just purely an MS diet. It, it is, um, it is. I'm sure it is good for everybody, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that, and thank you for joining us on the OMS Coffee Break, Sean Cressinger. <laughs> <laughs>